Here we are with the Dave Smith Pro 2. This thing has got to be my favorite analog synthesizer on the market today for a number of reasons. And I'm going to try to go over some of the some of them with you today. I don't use this as much for like traditional bass lines and leads that you can do on most synthesizers, although it is perfectly capable of doing that. One of the things that really jumps out at me at this thing is the ability to make um, rhythmic ambience or rhythmic percussion elements or combining the two in one patch to create lots of background textures that I'll use in the songs that I'm then playing basses and leads and whatnot over top of. And I can use this thing to go like straight into like Portis Head territory or Massive Attack territory or straight up into like some of the really harsh stuff like you might hear from uh, underground acts like Empty Set and whatnot. So I'm going to go over some of that with you today here. So let's uh, find ourselves a patch that we can kill. Uh, I'm just going to kill that one in general. There, so we've written a, a basic program. So, basic program set up. I'm going to hit the sequencer, and now we can use the 16 sequencers on this thing to sequence all the different parameters that you're going to find on the synthesizer, whether or not they have a knob on the front or they're a little bit more buried in, like your FX section, like your uh, decimate drive and hack and all that uh, character section stuff. <clears throat> Matter of fact, this is the, some of the stuff that I like to sequence the most in there because it's very subtle. And being able to do all these parameter lock style sequences on very subtle elements brings out a lot of character in this. And for me, this thing is all about that. So I'm going to go over with you real quick how I put together a patch like this. Now, you go to sequence one and you'll see a whole bunch of just C5 notes. And that's kind of where they start everything. But I'm going to hit uh, step one and we will make a... There, it's an F. And I will... You can... Um, pick how long the gate time is on that by just clicking wherever and you'll see that it fills up that and you can fill up the rest of it with other note data but i'm just going to run the whole thing straight open and we get a nice little bass tone out of it hopefully you can hear that so we hear it re-triggering there i'm just going to adjust the envelope there so we lose our re-trigger sound so now I gotta pick what I'm gonna do for the rest of the sequence. And right away, I'm gonna start uh, digging into like the wave shapes and whatnot. So. There, I like that kind of nasal sound, being able to sequence out of that to other sounds. So we'll go to sequencer two, just turn that knob and all of a sudden is now assigned that sequencer is assigned to your wave shape table. So you can use your select knob there, or your, sorry, your step value knob to enter in the appropriate data. treats as offset not uh, specific values you're allowed to change the initial value of whatever it is you're working with and it'll treat the sequence as an offset to that it won't jump to whatever it was meant to go to like on some other instruments oh i like that one Yeah, I like the little bit of bite in that. So now we have just some basic, basic uh, low-end rhythmic elements going on. Let's open up on the sex sequencer and go in and we'll pick, uh, let's try hack. We'll enter in some uh, rhythmic data on the hack. Not a lot going on with hacks, let's change it to...
I'm loving that. So let's grab another sequencer. Go in and we'll do some drive. in a different uh, filter type. Give us a little bit of control over everything. Now when I find something that gives me a lot of motion in the sound, something I'm like, wow, I like it both low and high, I'll quite often take that specific parameter and assign it to something so that I can use those performance-related data. In this instance, it's the cutoff on the uh, state variable filter. Now, assigning modulation to this thing is ridiculously easy. So I go to Assign Source. You just touch your slider and you're assigned uh, what the source is. Assign Destination. For, uh, for instance, do cutoff. You'll notice that they already had it in there as a, as an option for well, like a preset uh, kind of sound. I'll just remove that because I wanted to show you how exactly how to do it. Then you can dial in the amount that you're uh, working with here that you want to work with. Let's try that. Let's dial it up a little. Great. So I know now when I'm playing that patch, I can just give myself a little bit of slider and I can mess with my knob settings. Yeah, feedback, you gotta be careful with it <laughs> every single time. So now we have some very interesting rhythmic material going on all right out of the gate. So I'm going to go back to sequencer one here to start a note data. And I'm going to try entering a different note here on step 13. And we'll go just uh, say one octave up. run that to the last four steps. Now we have something really basic going on. You notice that we're only using one oscillator here. Now I can add in other oscillators to add um, timbral additions to the basic sine waves that, or the basic waves that we have going on with that. But I'm going to use them in a bit of a different way. So I'm going to go down to uh, oscillator two. First, I'm going to turn the output level of oscillator one down so we won't hear it in the sequence. Bring up oscillator two. <laughs> Uh, 
There, I found myself a little bit of red noise. Now, I'm not gonna play that using the, the normal sequence data that I already entered in there. What I'm gonna do is just turn the output of the volume of that all the way off, go to a sequencer that I'm not using, and now oscillator two level is where it's at. So I'll enter in some there and some there. So it's like we have a bit of a snare in the mix. So we'll go back to oscillator one and... So let's turn those down again and go to number three. Oh, we don't have a... There, yeah, super buzz. Let's find something really annoying. <laughs> Let's find something super annoying that we can bring in in kind of the same way, but I'm going to use something a little bit different to, uh, to boost that up. So let's try adding an LFO. Now again, you just go assign source, LFO one, straight up. And then you go assign destination, and we're gonna do oscillator three level. So now, when you're getting really rhythmic with the stuff, quite often I like to lock things into a certain tempo. So I'll go to our, uh, there, we'll go to our filter settings, and you can sync everything right in. Um, we'll get ourselves some just like 16th notes there. So yeah, I still have that. So yeah, we gotta bring that frequency up a lot. Another thing that you could do is you hold down uh, play and record at the same time, and you could just record actual knob motions in there. But for something like what I'm doing on that, I think I'm going to do just that. There. So oh, you can see how we can start building up just amazing rhythmic material. Overdrive the hell out of it.
now you can see that we're using our envelopes to further give the, the whole sound some motion. I like that. That particular function takes the uh, filters from going in serial to parallel mode, and I'm finding some interesting uh, level changes when I do that. So there you can get a really good impression of exactly how I like to program lots of things like this. So we'll go into write, well, let's call it basic program for now because I don't like writing in everything all the time. So it's called basic program and you can jump straight back to it. Now a quick example of some of the other patches I've done on here. You'll notice a lot of the ones that I do, I name with an IVS uh, representing my band name. So. That was named after one of my favorite uh, electronic acts called Empty Set. Much more of a traditional, like, kind of heavy bass line. Little glitch. That one uh, makes particular use of the uh, feedback inside modulation. So you get a really good impression of exactly how I like to use this thing and how I think it's such a real giant in the realm of uh, musical sound design. Um, you'll hear this in most of the tracks I'm doing these days in the background. It fills in the textures. It brings uh, a lot of the, uh, the track alive. Uh, it gives it a lot of depth. And of course, any of these uh, sequences that you're playing, you can change, you can transpose by playing it on a different note. So unless you like, like mess around with it a little live. So yeah, there we go. Uh, and that, and I, I'm not kidding in this at all, all these CV outs that you have right here allow you to have this kind of atmospheric uh, modulation control inside your Euro rack or other modular stuff. So feel free to just go absolutely nuts with all of the gear that you have controlled from this guy because 
wow. Uh, seriously, I love it, and I think you will too.